Hey guys, it's Tuesday, September 19th, 2017. You're at Three Canyons Permaculture Farm and I'm showing you frozen tomatoes. I'm gonna just quick do a run by here and you can see cucumbers, freeze damage, squash, freeze damage, beans, frozen, squash. The corn is that color because it's frozen. It's, it's done, freeze damage. We got some ears in here, small ones. Cosmos frozen. Frozen tomatoes. All the winter squash and summer squash got hit. It's all dead. <coughs> now we could save some nice, there's some nice squash in here I'm gonna harvest today. Now that I saw the de devastation, there's a nice yellow squash in there. But it froze so hard that the winter squash froze. That's not good. I can't save that. What we have is an early freeze here. It's one of the shortest growing seasons in Pagosa in years. It's less than 85 days here. That's like Alaska. We're at 30 degrees north latitude. A lot closer to the equator than Alaska. I'm going to go show you some statistics about how anomalous this is. But going into the Grand Solar Minimum, this is what we're going to expect. Hey guys, we're back inside. Thanks for joining me. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project showing you the Pagosa Springs average first frost date. And I was just telling you about the growing season this year. Well, it just froze 28 degrees on September 18th. And that's in the 30 percentile of when that happens. And it froze this spring. I had I lost all my beans on June 28th and you can see that's not even in the top 10 that's over here so we have a very small growing season probably if you average 10% or less and for the freeze in the spring and the freeze right now right here on the 18th 30 it's about 20% we're in the 20 percentile of the growing season because we're going into the solar uh, grand solar minimum and We'll just touch on that real quick. Here's the weather forecast over two feet of snow. Forecast for certain areas up here in Wyoming and Montana. Um, this is the, here I am. The, it, the departures from normal for the next four days are not even where I'm at. I'm in the Four Corners region right here where I'm pointing to you, where our growing zone in the Colorado inter interactive map here, here are the Four Corners. Farmington, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado. There's Denver. I'm down here, right in this valley, 5B. Should have a little bit more growing than that. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to or liked Solar Shutdown on Facebook, please go do that now. And as we descend into the grand solar minimum i want to give you a little bit more uh data here for you to uh so you can become more knowledgeable about what's happening with the climate this is the daily sunspot area averaged over solar rotations from 1870 to present this is up to date okay i'm going to move this sure. so you can get a better view here And here we are today. Take a look at this sunspot cycle 24 that we're in. Now, go back in history to find a similar sunspot cycle in amplitude or magnitude. And you could say, oh, here, about 14? Nope, it's a little higher. In fact, 12 is even higher than 24. You have to go back to 1870 to even compare to the cycle we're in and the next cycle is going to be even smaller you go back to 400 years of observations here's 1870 that's these are the equivalent cycles and the next cycle is going to be like the Dalton minimum there'll be a Dalton minimum cycle and then a lower cycle and then we'll be into a maundered minimum a maunder minimum setting like the modern minimum the grand solar minimum I'll leave links to this graph for you uh, in the description box I will leave this amazing interactive chart which is really uh, a nice graphic 
for you to peruse and to make comparisons on the sunspot cycles and their uh, geometry. I mean, there's a lot to look at here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like Solar Shutdown. Stay tuned for more Grand Solar Minimum updates as the weather progresses. And watch out for snow up here. Time to get the shovels out. Guys, thanks for watching. Be safe.